America, land of the free. According to different estimates, about 5 to 11% of people here have so-called ADHD. Not a lot, right? Well, that's actually about 16 to 35 million people. Looking at the world, we have lower estimates, ranging from 5 to 7%. Again, doesn't sound like a lot, but that's about 380 to 532 million people. So, with such high rates around the world, it begs the question, do you have ADHD? A parent may notice that a child is not acting like the other children in their playgroup. Tell the public these are diseases. Total fraud. There are no biological tests for any mental illnesses that I'm aware of. Distractions, but not everyone has a brain that functions like somebody with ADHD. In the farming world, on the other hand, this is the kid who blurts something out before the teacher calls up. I learned about ADD after being on the medication. How many patients have you been able to cure so far? <laughs> Welcome to Artem Hawk's Dumb. That's right, ADHD is something you're born with and is always going to affect your everyday life in many ways. This fact makes it even more important for you to find out if you're one of them. Please God, no, you're one of them, aren't you? You're one of them. This is Bob. Bob never really heard of ADHD up until now and never really got told he had it either. He just kind of thinks of himself as an odd dude who's never really seemed to fit in. And this is Emily. Emily got told by lots of her friends that she doesn't really listen to them when they're talking. Her parents also often tell her that she gets distracted easily. Bob texts at me. Bob and Emily, just like you, want to know if they have ADHD or not to be able to continue with their life. In order to help them and you, in the following I will list 14 criteria that would help you quickly identify ADHD. Personally, I'd recommend just keeping a sheet of paper in front of you and checking, dotting, or just doing something with the paper every time you think that that specific criteria fits to you so you don't lose track. You ready? Alright, here we go. Number one you have trouble sitting still. People who don't have ADHD can often sit still for hours on end on something that they have to do, like writing an assignment in the library. People with ADHD, on the other hand, find it very difficult to sit still and tend to, for instance, shake their leg when sitting, often distracting others. Now, please don't think that stretching once in a while is meant to fall into this category. That's totally normal. However, if you can sit a lot less still than when compared to the majority of people, then the first criteria might just have to be ticked. Number two, <laughs> you're quickly distracted by things that are stimulating. If you're quickly distracted by erotic fantasies when someone hot walks by, more than frequently notice odd combinations of writing found in good advertisements, or are distracted and can't keep your attention focused on what you wanted to say when music starts playing in the background, you might just have ADHD. People without ADHD often have no problem crowding out these external stimulations and are able to control their focus. Number three, you find it difficult to focus on tasks that don't interest you. People with ADHD can hyper-focus on tasks or games that spark their interest for hours on end. However, when it comes to studying for a biology exam or turning in an assignment, we have a very difficult time keeping focused on the task at hand. Number four, you often switch from one activity to another, leaving the last one unfinished. People with ADHD are notorious for being totally motivated for an activity on one day and switching to something totally different on the next, leaving behind a lot of unfinished projects. This is why, amongst other things, people with ADHD are three times more likely to start a business. I have successfully privatized world peace. Number five, you're internally restless. What this means is that you can't ever seem to catch a break and unlike most people you don't take time to relax and do nothing for instance you'll never find yourself just lying on the bed for 20 minutes staring up at the ceiling your hyperactivity will simply make this a lot harder for you it's like even when you're tired your brain seems to be fully active jumping from one thought to the next number six you often can't wait your turn you often can't wait to be the one to talk or do something since you lack the ability to keep still this can get especially annoying for people who are working in a group with you, since you, without wanting to be mean, often just talk over or interrupt them. <laughs> Number 7. You blurt out things before they become evident. Now even though this might sound like the last one, there's a fundamental difference. What this means is that you know what people are gonna say before they say it, often finishing their sentence. Again, this could annoy people, because people are like, why are you finishing my sentence? You know, but your thoughts are just faster than their mouths. Whoa, what? Guys, don't be like my friend here. Yeah, that came out wrong. Sometimes this can even give you the upper hand in social situations. 
Nice wig, Janice. What's it made of? Your mom's chest hair. Ah, that gets me every time. Number eight, you have trouble completing tasks. This is similar to number four, and basically again just means that you have trouble finishing a project that you've started. This can mean that you had about 20 jobs in the last 20 years or 10 years, or that you've tried getting on a diet for about the 10th time now. Again, you're easily motivated for these things, but when it comes to sticking it out until the end, you often don't manage. Number nine, it's difficult for you to play calmly. You don't like to play chess or any other games that require you to be calm and collected for a longer period of time? Well, this characteristic is strongly linked to ADHD since your hyperactivity won't let you be calm. People with ADHD often get deeply stimulated by games that they like, which can lead to things like rage quits or breaking something. On the other hand, it can make you extremely happy when you've accomplished something. Number 10. You often don't think things through before you do them, which got you the reputation of being a risk taker. Now, this doesn't mean you skydive every second day, but little things that your friends might not want to do are no trouble for you. On the other hand, you might make drastic decisions that can have big consequences on your life, like robbing a store or in worst cases killing someone. It is estimated that 25-40% to 40 of prison inmates in America in fact have undiagnosed ADHD. The gunfight is in the head, not in the hands. Number 11. You often lose things that you need in order to do homework, complete assignments or get home. That's right, if you often find yourself losing your key or your phone, that means you can check this criteria. Number 12, you often disrupt others. Now, I know we've mentioned this about 10,000 times already, but these are the official criteria issued by the American Psychiatric Association, and this is the way they are listed. So don't come at me, all right? But since we've extensively covered this, I think we can continue with number 13. You talk a lot. We love talking. We love it so much that we often annoy people with it, but we don't care because we just kind of love it. Talking for us is so great because we simply allow all of our thoughts to come out, not having to keep them all inside. And because we have so many thoughts, there's always something to talk about. Because of this, people with ADHD are often good public speakers. And now we come to the last and probably most prominent criteria. Drum roll please. You often don't seem to be listening. People with ADHD are so easily distracted by people, noise, light or anything else that we often stop listening to people when either we think we know what they want to say before they say it, or if something else is simply of more interest to us. It takes a lot of mental strength for people with ADHD to listen to something that fits those two criteria. If you crossed or made marks at least 8 out of 14 times on your paper, you most probably, according to the American Psychology Association, have ADHD. Also, if you didn't mark your paper and can't remember how many of those criteria fit to you, you're lazy and might also have ADHD. If you think you have ADHD, I'd highly recommend watching my next video, So You Think You Have ADHD, What Now?, where I explain things like if you should tell your friends, see a therapist, etc. I'd also highly recommend subscribing to my channel and ringing that notification bell in order to get weekly updates on how you can easily get through life with the so-called condition. This has been Artem Hugs. Boom! Till next time, guys.